Now, today we've talked about uh, handling data, cleaning it up, getting it ready to use with machine learning methods, and finally we're ready to uh, step into the machine learning side of things. And this first step is going to be into the classifier domain. Fundamentally, what classifiers are about is taking some sort of an input and determining which of several categories uh, that this particular input belongs to. The category, number of categories is always uh, finite. Uh, and typically, we know the total number of categories uh, ahead of time. This type of um, model shows up in lots of different situations. Uh, for example, we might do, be doing image recognition, so deter determining uh, cats versus dogs. We might want to uh, choose whether to give a loan or not, given information of, uh, about uh, financial history. Uh, we might want to use image data or uh, MRI data or some other kinds of data to determine whether or not a tumor is malignant or benign. And if we're building vehicles that are autonomously driving on our roads, we want to be able to tell the difference between a stop sign and a speed limit sign. Formulating a, a classifier, there are a variety of ways to do it. Uh, in the general case, the input data can be numerical or categorical. Uh, for what we're doing uh, for the next few videos, we're going to assume that we're working entirely in the numerical world. And, and of course, as you know from, uh, from last week, uh, categorical data can always be transformed into numerical data using things like one-hot encoding. We're also going to make an assumption right now that we have uh, exactly two classes, and we'll refer to those as positive and, and negative uh, examples. Now, formulating a classifier, because we are dealing with numerical data, uh, where each of our inputs has n numerical values, we can think of ourselves as working inside of an n-dimensional space. So our samples uh, are points within this space that happen to have labels, the so positive and negative labels. And our task is to identify a surface that we can place within this space that separates the positives from the negatives. Because we're working in an n-dimensional space, uh, the surface happens to uh, have a dimensionality of n minus 1. Now, the simple case for, uh, for drawing and visualizing these, uh, these types of models is when n is equal to 2. So we have exactly two features that are coming in as our inputs. And when we're in this situation, then our surface becomes a curve. And the, the simplest curve that is interesting to us is a line. We know how to formulate that. Okay, so here's our uh, n-dimensional space here. In this case, n is equal to, to 2. We'll refer to our features as, say, x0 and, and x1. And as I said in the introduction, that the points within this space are points uh, in this x0, x1 space, but they do have labels. So we'll put uh, plus signs uh, along here uh, to indicate that we have uh, positive examples. And then we might also have uh, negative examples sitting out. We'll put them uh, off over here. So let's go ahead and, and draw a, a line through this space. So I'm going to draw a line I carefully choose this one draw it right there. And there are a variety of ways that we can express this line, but one way to do that is to say uh, we're going we're to write a function f of, I'll uh, use capital X to uh, imply a vector that includes both x0 and x1. And, and let's formulate it this way. So we've got w0, x0 plus w1, x1 plus W2. So, so W2 is our, our bias term, and W0 and W1 are our gain terms, so to speak. Now this line here uh, corresponds to the situation where Fx is uh, equal to 0. So let's, so let's try and figure out 
uh, what W's actually correspond to this, uh, this line. And uh, let me go ahead and write those down here. So there, there turns out there's an infinite number of ways to choose the, the combination of W0, W1, and W2. Here is one simple way. So we're going to say W2 is equal to negative one. Uh, w1 is equal to one and W0 is equal to negative one. So what that yields is um, the description of our line becomes uh, zero equals f x of uh, negative x zero plus positive x one minus one. So so let's let's check that uh, case. So let me pick a, a point on the line. So this point right here has an x0 of, uh, of 3 and an x1 of 4. So that gives us minus 3 here, plus 4, minus 1. If we add all of those up, that gives us a, a 0. Uh, likewise, if we uh, pick this point right here, that gives us uh, 6 and seven, so minus six plus seven minus one is also equal to zero. Okay. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out is that if I were to pick a point, let's make this a different color here. If I were to pick a point, say, right at this location here, that's an x zero of two and an x one of five, then what that gives us is uh, minus two plus five minus one, which gives us two. And in fact, if I pick any point that is above this line, then uh, f of x is always going to be positive. So this region uh, sitting up here, it corresponds to fx being greater than zero. And the complement to that, of course, is if I were to pick a point, say right here, so that is six and two. So minus six plus two minus one gives us negative five. In fact, every point within this region gives us f of x is less than zero. So this suggests a, a very simple way of translating what we observe from f, f of x uh, into a class label. And let me, let me go ahead and write that down. So our class is going to be one of two things. So this is this curly bracket just indicates that we have either a positive or negative case. So it's positive if f of x is greater than zero, and it's negative if, if f of x is uh, less than zero. Now this does leave, when we're actually implementing things, this does leave an element of uh, ambiguity uh, in that what happens when a point falls exactly on the line. And in practice, what we do is we make an arbitrary choice. So I'm going to add in uh, an equal sign right here. So if f of x is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to call it positive. And in, in the long run, this doesn't actually uh, result in any problems for us. So, so we have, we, we can make any choice we want about those parameters, the w0, w1, and, and w2 uh, parameters. And each choice gives us a different line. And, and some lines are, are better than others. And, and a, an important question is, how do we tell the difference between one line and, and another? And this is going to be central to our uh, algorithm that we'll use to uh, make choices about where the line goes. So one straw man possibility is that for a given set of parameters, we draw that line in and we run through all, 
of the training examples and we count the number of training examples that are labeled incorrectly. So we'll, we'll just call that error. And, and what we fundamentally want is a situation where we can pick a line where error is equal to zero. So here's, here's another space that's defined by x0 and x1 that has some number of uh, positive examples. And, and then we also have some number of uh, negative examples. So let's look at a couple of different models here. So I could make a choice such as this one here, where I draw a line right there. And in this particular case, it takes care of all of the positive examples appropriately, but it places two of the negative training samples on the wrong side of the line. So in this particular case, our error is going to be equal to two. I could also uh, draw a line, let's say uh, through here. And let's assume that, that that ambiguous negative example is actually on the wrong side. So in this particular case, our error is equal to uh, four. So, so there are a couple of examples for you. Uh, let me draw one more. I'm going to put another one right right through here. So, so in this particular case, uh, it, it misclassifies this, the same one. So it misclassifies this one, this one, uh, this one, and this one down here. So, so in this case, error is, is also equal to four. So, so this illustrates one of the, the points about this particular error metric in that there are different parameterizations of our function that give us exactly the same uh, error values. And, and in fact, error in this uh, setup can only be an integer value. So, so the key takeaway from, from these drawings is, is that, at least intuitively, it's capturing the, the right idea. Um, however, many solutions look the same by, by this metric. And something else that we have trouble with is that for, uh, for this uh, metric value for, for a given metric value uh, it's not really clear how to actually make changes to the parameters so that we improve the classifier um, that doesn't necessarily stop us and in fact let me show you a candidate uh, learning algorithm here so, so here's some pseudocode for such an algorithm we're going to randomly choose our parameters at the beginning and then we'll measure our error and as long as that error is unacceptably large and exactly what we mean by that can can vary uh, what we're going to do is make some small changes to our uh, parameters w0 w1 and w2 and then we'll measure error again uh, and if that error doesn't become larger than it was before then we'll keep these new parameters and continue to spin in this, in this while loop as long as uh, the, the error is unacceptable. Once the error does become acceptable, then we drop out of the loop and, and we're done. So let's come back to our particular training set that we were looking at before. Clearly, the, the uh, early guesses that we made were not particularly acceptable. And, and in fact, we probably wouldn't uh, transition immediately from purple to blue, uh, the, the kinds of transitions that we're, that we're making with random changes, small changes to the parameters are more like uh, the case from blue to orange. Um, if, if we do that long enough, then, then we might end up with a solution that looks more like this. So, so here's a, Here's a case where error is equal to zero, but it's, it's also the case that we could end up in a scenario where we have, say, 
uh, this, whoops. this solution here, that's also the case that error is equal to zero. And we could even be more extreme. So let's put that one, let's start it right here. And that one also, error is equal to, to zero. So, so the point here is that our learning algorithm won't actually make a distinction between either one of these particular uh, solutions, the, the red, green, or blue uh, solutions. And that might be okay for the kinds of things that we want to do, but uh, uh, they can also lead to uh, some problems. Um, let me draw just one more solution in here. We'll make this one purple. We'll drop it right through there. So that's also an error is equal to zero case. So one of the problems that can occur uh, is that we're right now just looking at our training set. And, and if we imagine in the future that we're drawing new samples that we actually want to classify, uh, we're hopefully drawing from the same distribution. So we're nominally expecting our positive examples if, if our training set is a good representation of our distribution, we're expecting our new samples to come in and in a similar distribution. So, so those positive examples are gonna come in on the upper left-hand side and the negative examples are going to come in on the lower right-hand side. However, we do expect a certain degree of, uh, of variance. And if, if our solution actually was, say, the green line, uh, it's it's possible that we could end up with an example that in truth is a negative example, but it happens to trip just a little bit more to the left and it goes over the line, in which case our classifier is going to call it a positive example. Uh, likewise, up at the top, uh, right in, in this vicinity here, uh, we could end up with a new sample that sits sits right here. And looking at the topology of things, that, that new sample is closer to the positives than it is the negatives, and yet it falls on the right-hand side of the green line, so our classifier would actually call it a negative example. So, so the point here is that all, of all of our solutions, not, not all of them are equal in uh, quality in the sense of how, whether, how well they will do in, in the future. And I would argue that the the purple line that I've drawn in here, um, because it sits more inside of the channel, it's almost equidistant between our positive training examples and our negative ones, that it's one of the more conservative uh, choices and it's the more appropriate choice to be making uh, for a final solution. How, however, our learning algorithm does not allow us to, to make a distinction between any of these uh, particular cases. Okay, so, so to summarize then, we, we've talked about the, the, this uh, notion of uh, our n-dimensional space. In, in n equals two, we're drawing uh, decision boundaries that are just lines. Uh, and, and the algorithm that we proposed of we generate uh, a, a, an initial set of parameters, and then we start randomly tweaking those parameters until we're happy, this is actually, it's really easy to implement, and this is actually what, what we did for a, a while in the machine learning domain. Uh, however, the, this particular solution doesn't necessarily uh, give us a reasonable, uh, a reasonable answer in the end. So, so for one, we could actually end up taking many random steps before we even see any change in performance. And then even once we get down into this channel, in, in this example, we really don't have a way of telling the difference between all of the, the, the cases where error is equal to zero. And, and so this is going to be the, 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 the subject of uh, the, the next uh, couple of uh, videos.